Hello, this is Charlene Carla. Welcome to NASA. This is my Narcissistic Abuse Survivor Autobiography, where I share my testimony to help you along your healing journey. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about seasons, the change of seasons. How many of you guys remember that group, um, probably from the 90s, called Expose? Awesome female group and so they have this beautiful song out called seasons change if you remember that song please tell me in the comments beautiful beautiful song um and so i just kept getting confirmations again these communities with this corporate anointing talking about seasons changing so that explains my shirt um says you know of uh, greatest moms get promoted to grandma y'all know i am gma okay so there's a season when you're not a mom. There's a season where you may be a mom. And then there's a season where you may be a G ma. And for any of you grandmas out there, y'all know. <laughs> being a grandparent and being a parent are two totally, completely different things. Like my daughter still doesn't understand my relationship with my grandkids. Because it's completely different. Like you, you're not really, um, you know, like solely responsible for these these cute little people so you get to have fun hey i love you you give them all the hugs and kisses then you send them back home to mommy and daddy to change their diapers okay awesome most awesome thing thank you lord for my promotion to gma okay so first before we even get into the word before we get into this message oh my gosh please tell me why i encountered narcissist and didn't know <laughs> this person was a narcissist like usual you know what i'm saying it was like just it, the, the same again <laughs> these entities they're all the same it's the same spirits same demons working in these people right so now this is a business thing happening okay so trying to do business with a particular company right and so i was assigned this person this dude and so the we had our very first call consultation call and he was so sweet he was so nice he was so friendly that was at the time when i like literally had no voice and i said i might be talking to you in the chat because i had like no voice at all at this point and so and i know that working with this company is would be a blessing to me and if that is God's will, it's going to be done. And so I know, honestly, that I know that that's one of the reasons why I lost my voice. Because I lost it like two days before I was supposed to be having my talk with this person, right? So he's nice and sweet and kind and, and favor, giving me favor. And oh, you know, we usually do this, but I'm not going to do that today for you. We're just going to do this and just do that. I'm like, okay, thank you, Jesus. I'm like, praise God for blessings and favor. And he's just like, oh my goodness, you know, I've been doing this for seven months and I've never come across a file like yours. Like yours is just the usual, you know, how charming they are, how sweet they are. They just, they just seem like the most, the bestestest person in the world, right? The nicest people in the world. He was literally love bombing me. Now I know that. Again, hindsight is usually 2020. So he's telling me all this stuff and, oh my goodness, well, you just need to do this and give me advice. Just do this and just do that and then you'll be great and blah, 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 blah. And you have us in the palm of your hand and you can do whatever you want to and and I'm excited. He gave me hope. I'm like, oh, wow, this can actually happen. Thank you, God. This is so awesome. I'm so blessed to have this dude as my counselor. And I hope I get to keep him. And <laughs> By the time we get to the second, just the second, not the third, the fourth, the fifth, the second call. I'm thinking it's going to be the same sweet kind favor blessing that's what i'm thinking but it starts off and what, oh my goodness like it was night and day between these two different calls thank god they recorded because y'all know i'm a i'm a telltale right so starts off the second call so i have you know 
85% of my voice back. And so I'm getting ready. I'm like, hey, do you, do you need me to, you know, log into the system and do this and this and this? And so I'm off cam. I'm not looking at this is video chat, right? So I'm not looking at his face while I'm, because I'm off in another thing trying to open up stuff. And I'm just like, oh, do you need me to do this, do that? And he's like, oh, no, not yet. I'm just, I'm just enjoying the view. As in me, right? And so I just, I let it just, I was like, oh, okay, so, all right, let's get started. And I just, just, I just let that float on by, float on, float on, right? Because he wasn't, he did not come at me like that the first time, right? And so, but he's taking his time in a weird way. Like, just kind of like, okay, so, it just, ooh, I didn't see black eyes. I, I should have looked. Uh, I didn't notice if his eyes were black, but I could tell there was something, you know, like, you can see in their spirit, there was something different but it was still nice it just it just seemed different right and so then he goes into oh i love your hair bro this is the same hair i had you know three weeks ago when we talked you didn't mention my hair then so why are you mentioning it now and i was just like oh thank you you know 11 years i've been going to blah blah so anyways blah blah and again so i just let it float on by again because i'm i'm not thinking that something is wrong. I'm just like, okay, he's just being a dude, whatever. It's a Friday. And he's just like, oh, you know, today's Friday and you're my last client for the day. So we can just take our time. And I'm just like, cool, awesome. Cause I'm thinking I have favor with this guy, right? So we get into the call, do our stuff. And so we're, again, I, I can feel, you know, just like when my spirit man would be churning, when you know, the Holy Ghost would be trying to tell me, you know, Cookie Monster's about to flip out, okay? So I didn't have an uneasy feeling, but it was just different. You know, you could just, the atmosphere was just different. But we go through, and we're on the call for like almost an hour and a half, right? All of a sudden, he's, he says a phrase, and I'm like, I used to be in the same industry that he's in right now that I'm trying to work with his company. And so I said, I've never heard that phrase before. That that doesn't make sense. I've, I've never heard that before. And so I'm just kind of like, I'm just I'm just saying that, you know, just like, gee, I've, not, I've never heard that before. That, that sounds weird. I didn't insult him. I wasn't saying he was stupid or that, you know, he made up something or that he was lying. None of that. I was just like, that sounds weird. So when I say all of a sudden, y'all know, mm, you've been in a narcissistic relationship. You know how that suddenly, suddenly it's a, a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Suddenly, all of a sudden, he, I mean, when I say, demeanor change bah, 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 bah. and he's pulling up their rules and their procedures and this 400 page document and he's pulling this is a video chat so he's sh sharing his screen and i'm just looking like okay i can't read that and so i'm trying to talk and i'm just like it's dude i just said you know i'm just trying to get clarification because i've never heard that phrase before i'm just trying to get clarification that's that's it and he but he wouldn't let me speak he started talking over. I mean, he would just, and he wasn't yelling, but he was just like, just like a train and just would not come to a stop. I'm just like, okay, yes, I understand that. But what I was just trying to say was, and I'm just like, and I kept saying, sir, sir, I'm just asking. So I said, okay, let me save my voice because this dude done lost his mind. So I go and let me look at my my workbook that they gave me, that this company gave me, and let me try to look up. So he's just running his mouth, and I'm just like, let me just pull up my PDF because this dude done, just done lost his mind. I'm still not thinking, this dude could be a narcissist. I'm just like, he flipped out for no reason, and I have no idea why. And so I said, I said so I'm trying. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, I'm trying because I've learned. Remember, to not cuss people out anymore. I've learned 
to not go tit for tat. I've learned not to yell at customer service agents anymore. I still didn't tell you guys that story. I'm gonna have to do it maybe next week if the Lord say so. So, so he's just going and going and going. He wouldn't, he would stop for five seconds and I'm just like, okay, so let me just, can I finish my sentence? You're not letting me finish my sentence. I don't understand. And so I said, okay, I don't know how we got here. I don't know what's going on. I asked a simple question. I made a simple statement. You keep talking over me. You won't let me finish my sentence. I don't know what's going on, but just transfer me to a different counselor. I said, just give me to another counselor. I said, I'm, I said, you know, my voice is still not hundred percent. I said, I can't do this. I don't have time for this. And I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening, but I'm not going to try to talk to somebody who's talking over me. I said, this is not going to work. This is not business communication. This is not effective communication. So he stopped at some point. It took him a while. It took me a while to get all of that out. But he finally stopped. And I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm ending this call because I, you, you're just talking over me. So I'm ending this call. Goodbye. At least I said goodbye. Click. Leave. Do, do, do. Went straight to customer service. Yeah, I need you to transfer me to a different counselor. Oh, really? Well, what was the issue? And told them the entire story. Okay. And then I said, then I went back to the first meeting. I said, and in the first meeting, he was supposed to do X, Y, and Z, but he didn't do that. That's on him. So she, she's, did, and this is the thing, people, the video chats are recorded. You know, my customer service call with that lady was recorded. So I'm just like, you're acting a fool and you know, it's recording. What's wrong with you? They can't control it. Remember? So it literally wasn't until after, because I immediately, when I say immediately, immediately called and said, transfer me. I'm not going to wait for him to transfer me. I'm going to transfer myself to a different, different uh, representative. So after I got off the call, ranting and raving to the lady, and I'm, I wasn't, I was just like, I just, I can't believe that this happened. And I just asked this and blah, blah, blah. And this makes no sense. And blah, blah, blah. But I was calm talking to her, but she's just like, she lit. Now she listened. She didn't say it worse. She just like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Let me call his manager and make sure that she listens to these video chats and you will be contacted as soon as you're, um, uh, you know, given to somebody else. And I was, praise the Lord, planned to have a normal conversation with a normal human being in Jesus Christ's name. But it wasn't until after I got off the phone complaining with customer service about him that God was like, he's a narcissist. And I was like, oh my gosh. Because again, <laughs> when you're in that pot, whether it's for two calls or two days or two weeks or two months or two years, you don't really understand what you're dealing with. You just understand, okay, it was good on Monday and not so good on Tuesday. What just happened? You're just trying to, again, how did we end up here? So I didn't realize it while I'm in it and then I'm just like oh wow I hadn't dealt with a narcissist like that like talk to them seeing their face I haven't done that in because mm. how long have I been gone with Cookie Monster okay July 27 2021 right so I haven't had to engage like that I, I you know again people people here people there but not I'm talking to you I'm on a video chat I'm seeing your face I haven't had to deal with the narcissist that way. So I was just like, oh, that like hurt my little heart. I said, Lord, have mercy. You got to be on the lookout, people. Just, I had to, I said, let me tell my people this story. Because I had not had a narcissistic encounter in so long that while I was in the midst of it, I didn't even realize that that would what was happening because while he's trying to talk over me i'm just trying to talk i'm not trying to go i'm not stopping to think our first call was nothing like this but i feel like literally like i said um and then he tell me something about his girlfriend and then you know we talk about you know being self-employed or whatever and he's trying to explain to me 1099s and i'm like sir you already know i've been self-employed since 2015 so why are you trying to explain 1099s will you ask me no Again, that projection, that lying, that 
you know, word salad. That was, it was just a, I was in a bowl of word salad. But again, you're in that, you know, conversation. You're in that interaction. You don't realize what's happening until afterwards. And you go, oh my gosh. But I feel like it was like, because again, from, remember from the beginning of that call, it was like that spirit of lust. And I feel like because I didn't reciprocate, even though, like I said, he mentioned something about a girlfriend. So I'm like, you don't need to be telling me how cute my hair is if you got a girlfriend, okay? Or how you want to enjoy the view if you got a girlfriend. But we all know they cheat, so whatever. But trying to get new supply. So are you mad that I'm not reciprocating? Are you mad that I'm not about to be one of your new supplies? Like, that's what I feel like it just it just shifted because the first conversation was just so completely different. But of course, he's love bombing me. Okay, to get me trying to stuck in a cycle. Like, why do you really think I'm gonna continue being your client when I can't even, you know, get a I like I couldn't finish a sentence. Okay, so just had to rant and rave about that to you guys but just keep your eyes again spiritual eyes and spiritual ears open because remember they're everywhere okay so let's get into the message about changing seasons i think i've been mentioning I, right now i'm in a season of my life where um i'm in a learning season like to the point where i'm having dreams about being in classrooms and being in school and stuff I'm just learning. But again, I'm learning things, knowledge to apply. Not like years ago when I was just like, oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. <clears throat> and then go home and do nothing. Okay, so let's get into the word today. <laughs> Talking about seasons. So I'm going to read two scriptures today. The first one is in Ecclesiastes. I think you've only been there once or twice. Uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Familiar passage of scripture called a time for everything to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven okay to everything relationships work career uh ministry uh everything there is a season and a time and a purpose under heaven okay and that's when it goes into a time to be born, a time to die, you know, time to heal and things like that. So we, we know there's a time for everything, a season for everything. The second scripture is in Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. This is Daniel talking about God. And he said, and he, Abba Father, he changeth the times and the seasons. We have no control over that. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. So we have to understand that to everything, there is a time, there's a season. And then we have to understand that it's God. He's the one that's changing the times and changing the seasons. Um, we don't have control over that. Uh, there's a scripture, I believe in Psalms, and David's like, hey, my times are in your hands, Lord. And I'd say that to God a lot, like, okay, I don't know what's happening, what's going on, but my times are in your hands. So have your way, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, okay? That's why we have to, you know, walk closely with God, walk in the spirit, pray, pray without ceasing, without ceasing. Keep that, get that dialogue, that communication with you're talking and then you're letting God talk to you. Because if he's the one who's changing times and seasons, you should want to know what God has for you, what season he has for you. So like I said, right now, I'm in a season of I'm learning. Learning things for my future. Like I said, I mentioned taxes mortgages and real estate and business and wealth and 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 you know just mental health care again inner healing things like that this is my season to learn and apply these things for my future 
like the, the glory of my latter house shall be greater than of the former. Okay, so the rest of my life, the next 50 years or more, however the Lord lets me live, is going to be better than the previous 50. Because the previous 50 were just like, you know, <laughs> kind of like, again, in and out of the kingdom type stuff going on, right? I'm also, I'm in a kingdom, I'm in a season of being VIP. Okay, because before I was looking at everything, oh gosh, let me say this first. Our mindsets have to change. Everything is our, it's our mind. Remember the scripture that says, you know, you know, the, the issues of life are flowing from our heart. Okay, remember body, spirit, and soul. Our thoughts come from our heart. Ask me how I know. You know how I know. Because there was a time in my life where my thoughts were like, la, 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 just all carnal, completely carnal, completely did not have the mind of Christ. And so God was like, can you get in my word and find out about your thoughts and how, where they coming from and what you need to do to keep them in line with my word? They come from our heart. Okay. So mindset. So now my mindset, just an example about money. My mindset is completely different now about money, about wealth. Um, you know, my friends used to call me the free queen because <laughs> I knew all the free stuff. Hey, here's a free event. Here's a free product. Here's a free this. You can publish your book for free. You can do that for free. I love free stuff. And I... That was my mindset. That was my thing. And people don't value free stuff. Um, but I get, I've been to a lot of free events that I've gotten value from. And I'm like, y'all tripping, sleeping on this free stuff. Like, it's free, people. Just get in the room. Get the information, right? You know, everybody has a free masterclass and free webinar and free Zoom and free this. Get in the room, people. Learn something. Um, so, you know, I'm doing that. But then when, you know, most of the time you take it a step, step further and, okay, now you got to invest in yourself at some point again mindset go from consumer to investor there's no wealth in just consuming stuff just buying stuff there's wealth in investing you invest in yourself you invest in property you invest in your business you invest in your kids you're gonna get some dividends you're gonna i'm paying taxes on dividends okay going to get some ROI, some return on investment. You're going to get that, okay? It's just like sowing the seeds. You shall reap what you sow, okay? And you're going to reap if you faint not. So don't faint, all right? Trust God. Hold on to his unchanging hand. His hand is unchanging, even though he's the one changing the seasons, changing the times. Um, so mindset, wealth. Um, I, my dad, Remember, narcissist number one in my life that I didn't know was a narcissist. He would tell me and my sister, um, cause he was, he wasn't wealthy, but he just, he had money. <laughs> Why? Cause he didn't pay that much in child support. Anyways, um, so he just, he had it, but he didn't flaunt it. It wasn't like, oh, my daddy's rich and blah, but he has a butler and it wasn't like that. It was just like, he has money. Money is not an issue for him, right? So he would just tell me and my sister, live below your means he didn't tell us what that meant and then he didn't tell us how to do it okay and like i said remember he bought bought some land built that house south carolina you know cash no mortgage and where's that where's that house now that's the house all oh, this is for you and your sister and your kids and even your mom but it's gone it's out of the family. It had to be sold because at the end of his life, he didn't have his affairs in order like he could have and should have. So what, you know what I'm saying? So my mindset, I haven't seen wealth like in my face. I haven't seen millionaires or billionaires in my family. If there are any, <laughs> hit me up, okay? To tell me, not to give me money, but tell me how you made it. Tell me how you invested it. So when I get some money, I know what to invest in, okay? So I hadn't seen that my entire life. So it wasn't a goal for me. My goal was, okay, so, you know, my bills are, you know, 
1300 so if I make 1400 then I have a hundred dollar surplus that's a good thing right I'm just trying to like hey let me let me stay down here so I can get you know EBT for the next 10 years all right that's what the government wants they want you to think that way stay down here and we'll give you stuff we'll give you some more stimulus money and we'll give you this and we'll give you that and we'll give you a voucher and you get just stay down here. They don't want everybody up here. They don't want everybody balling, right? I had to change my mindset. Now I'm like, I, know I need to make more than just what my bills are. I need to, I'm blessed to be a blessing. I, if I pray every day, you know, thank you, Lord, for increasing me, me and my children more and more. Thank you, Lord, that I'm going to leave an inheritance to my children's children. How can I do that with a hundred dollar surplus that I'm probably going to get my nails and my toes did with that hundred dollar surplus? No, make goals for yourself, people, because the, the, the seasons are going to change. The times are going to change when it's when real estate market is hot. Get in there, do what you got to do and then reap the benefits. When the stock market is hot, get in there, reap the benefits. Because the seasons are going to change, the times are going to change, and it's God doing it. I'm in Florida. This is end of, you know, this is April, end of April, about to be May. You know, a couple weeks ago, I was putting on the heat. Then a couple weeks before that, I was putting on the AC. Then I was putting on the heat again, then the AC. And I'm looking out the window like, look, I'm trying to figure out what, what season is this? Because it doesn't look like spring. Is it spring? It doesn't look like spring. It's freezing one day and hot the next day. I'm like, okay, if it's 90 today in the middle of April, what is it going to be in August when it's really summer? When it's my birthday? What? How hot is it going to be? So you can't even tell what the seasons are. Again, the relationships we talked about friends and, and family relationships. Um, there's a season. There's a season to escape a toxic relationship. God will give you that Kairos moment like he gave me. Remember, I did go back and watch my very first video about it's time to escape. That was not, I didn't plan to leave that day. I just had the plan of escape in my brain because I asked for it, right? But when that season came, when that Kairos moment, that time, God opened up <laughs> like uh, the elevator doors to my new season, open that day. It, I, Remember I told you, he was on the phone. He was ratting, raving, running back and forth. Remember when he punched a hole in the wall and all this crazy stuff? And I'm sitting on the couch with just my rope and my flip-flops on. Remember that? God made sure, okay, I'm going to send him in the room on the phone. Uber is pulling up right now. Walk out the door and never look back. You don't want to turn into a pillar of salt like Lot's wife. When God opens those elevator doors into your new season, you better walk, run, J just go straight. I don't care whether you walk, run, skip, dance, fly, just go and don't look back. Don't look back, just go. There's gonna be a season when you have to change jobs. I think I told you guys when I got laid off the very first time out of the um, mortgage industry, like a week after I sent my first book, When Heaven Hears Your Prayer to my publisher, I got laid off. I wasn't planning on getting laid off. Hello, who's ever planning on getting laid off, right? Well, some people know ahead of time. I didn't know, I wasn't planning. I love my job so much. I'm like, I have my feet kicked up on my desk. Like, I'm gonna retire from this place. I was getting, they were giving us free food. Okay, awesome Christmas parties. We were celebrating, just all, it was awesome. And God's like, okay, if I don't, you know, shuffle that bird's nest, 
this little birdie is never going to learn how to fly. Heard an entire message about that, what the mama bird does to the baby bird. She's like, you need to learn how to fly. Let me shake up your house to force you to get out. Because if I don't, if I just keep telling you, you need to learn how to fly. You need to learn how to fly. You should really learn how to fly. You're just going to be like, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure, mom. I hear you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you're not going to move. But just like how I ended up in Rhode Island, God, I was, when I tell this story, I'm like, God went like this. Shook the earth. Northridge Quake. California. January 17th, 1994. Why do I know that date? Because my daughter, my only child, my only pregnancy, my only baby was born two years to that date. And I had her, she was conceived because that's the earthquake that forced me, that sent me to Rhode Island to meet with her father. Okay, to make her, all right? That was God. God was like, sorry, California. Sorry, Northridge, but I need Charlene to move to Rhode Island, okay? To meet some people in Rhode Island that are, are going to help her move to Florida, which is where I really need her because that's where she's going to come out of religion and into relationship. That was a huge season change, time change. I raised Catholic. I was chilling with my little... Stand, sit, kneel, genuflect, sprinkle the holy water. I was chilling with that. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going straight to heaven because I come in church first and I leave last and I be praying to Mary and ch God's like, please stop lighting those candles, okay? That's not, that's not, that's not God. Go read my book. That's not God, okay? It's about relationship. But there was a season where I was in religion. And God's like, I need you in a relationship. So again, when he, even the move down here from Rhode Island to Florida, I'm thinking I'm just moving because the cost of living is cheaper in Florida than Rhode Island. That's all I'm thinking. I didn't understand that it was God who's changing my times and my seasons. I didn't even understand that there was a time for everything and a season for everything. I didn't understand that. But now you know. Now you've read those scriptures, you know that. So prepare. I'm in a season again of preparation for my next, for my wealthy place, for my promised land. I'm in a season of preparation. Even when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he didn't just say, okay, get up, pack and go. There was an entire... <laughs> thing they had to do okay we got to kill the lamb we got to do this we got to eat the food with our clothes on and our shoes on we got to do that we got to put the blood on the on the doorpost and so the you know the, the death spirit you know uh passes over us and we got there was an entire preparation season even if that season is a few hours it was still a season it was still a time that god was in control of so they went from one day i'm a slave and the next day I'm crossing the Red Sea on dry land? That's God. If you're in a season right now where you're in pain, where you're in turmoil, where you're stuck, you feel like you're stuck in a narcissistic relationship or stuck in a toxic uh, relationship or environment, pray to God. Give me a strategy to change this season, to change this time in my life, to bring me into my promised land. Lord, you have to do it. Just like you said, I, 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 he's removing the kings and setting up kings. He's giving wisdom. Again, liberally, you need wisdom. He, just ask God. Ask. And he'll answer. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. The blueprint, I've been, oh gosh, that's a whole nother word. Blueprint, everything is a blueprint, blueprint. Marketing blueprint, this blueprint, business blueprint, this blueprint. This is our blueprint, the word of God. Get that wisdom, not knowledge, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. That's the principal 
thing, the principal thing, because you don't know the season that's around the corner. You may think, oh, well, it's spring now. So that means, you know, in a few months, it'll be summer. Okay, I'm straight with that. And then after that, it'll be fall. All right. And after that, it'll be winter. All right. But like I said, the weather is changing. So it could be snowing. Snowing in Cali? Like a few months ago, I was like, what? So seasons are changing. Times are changing. And God is in control. I think it was the, 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 the sons of Issachar, that tribe, Issachar, that understood the times and the seasons. Okay, P pray for that anointing, pray. If you need something, just pray, Lord. I need to know what season I'm walking into. I need to know what season to prepare for. Tell me, God, help me, lead me, guide me. His word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. He will lead you and guide you out of those toxic relationships. He will lead you and guide you to a brand new career, a brand new business adventure. He will lead you and guide you from a poverty mindset to your wealthy place, your promised land. I remember the Lord my God for it is he that gives me the power to get wealth. He's given me the power to get wealth. So my mindset doesn't have to be down here anymore because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Again, you need $50 for your phone bill. God's like, here's 50,000. Like, <laughs> I own it. Hello, it belongs to me. So tap in, get into your word, partner with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is the best partnership in the world before you go file your, you know, articles of organization, whatever, for a, a legal business partnership. Partner with the Holy Ghost. He's going to tell you, okay, you're about to get into a season of this. So this is how you prepare. This is what you need to do. When you get there, make sure you testify. Y'all know I will absolutely testify. This is what the Lord did for me. The Lord has done unto me great things, and I am glad. Okay. Your word, the sword of the spirit, that is what is going to help you navigate your new season. But know that God is in control. You may seem out of control. Your situation may appear to be out of control. Especially, again, when I was with Cookie Monster, I couldn't see. I couldn't hear straight. I didn't know what was going on. And all I could do was cry out to God and say, I need you to help me. Because I, I don't know how much more of this that I can take. And again, when once you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you'll leave. You will leave. But God is going to tell you when that time and that season is so you can walk out in victory okay okay thank you guys so much for watching this video for liking and sharing this video thank you for being on my channel and for subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell on my channel again i really do love you guys if you have any topics that you would like for me to discuss leave them in the comments or again you can always contact me directly on my website takeupthysword.com all my social media links are in the channel description. You guys be blessed and you be safe.